hey, 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 what is going on guys? This is Jason with Jenner and Aquatics. Thanks for hanging out with me in the fish room. So today we are gonna talk about breeding the Kamaka rainbow. This video is not just for Kamakas, it's pretty much for just about any rainbow that's out there. So you can use this to learn how to breed and to raise up the fry for just about any rainbow. But I'm also gonna give you some tips and tricks specifically for some problems that I've had with Kamakas. So let's go ahead and get, to get started so I can show you guys just how I do it. Okay, so you are ready to breed uh, Kamaka rainbows. So the first thing let's talk about is the uh, how to tell the difference between the uh, males and the females. Now when they're uh, ma very mature, like you see these two are right here, it's very easy to see the difference. Um, you can see that the male uh, has a much different uh, body structure, um, kind of that squatty, uh, kind of fat, tall uh, look to him, whereas the female that you'll see right here, the female is just kind of streamlined and doesn't have quite as much color in them, so they're very easy uh, to tell apart. Um, but let me show you some uh, younger ones who are just now sexually maturing, and uh, it's a little bit more difficult uh, to tell them at that age. Okay, so here we have um, some that are about uh, three or four months old and they are just barely starting to be sexually mature. Uh, the first thing that you'll, you'll notice is uh, the ability to tell the, uh, the males apart. And what happens is, is if you look at the top of their head, um, especially like that one right there, from the top of their head all the way down uh, the, the top of their, their fin, you'll see that it's almost like a silver color. Um, that's indicative of the males. What they do is they, that's one of the things they basically light up and that's what draws the, the female in. And so that's the way you can tell them apart when they're kind of young like this. But it can be difficult. The reason I say that is some of these ones in here that don't have that markings that appear to be females, it could be just because they're not actually old enough yet uh, to be able to start showing those male characteristics. So you don't always know uh, when you have them at this age if they are male or female. So the best thing that you can do is uh, if you're going to start with a, a, a small group of them or a, a young pair, uh, you want to get as many as you can. That way you, you, know, you run the best odds of getting a pair out of them. All right, let, let's go back over to the adults again. So uh, the first thing that you're, you're going to need is a, a spawning mop. Um, because whenever the uh, rainbow fish uh, lay eggs, they like to lay it in some type of plants, and uh, they have got to the point where they really, really enjoy uh, laying inside of these yarn spawn mops. So I'll link that above to show you guys how to make these. It's very simple, it's very cheap. Um, it's just simply some, uh, some acrylic yarn that you use. And uh, again, you can see, just watching right now, is see how the male is constantly twitching? And if you'll look, you'll see how he's lit up on top. That silver line I was showing you on the other males is extremely predominant uh, in this male right now as he's trying to lure that female into that spawning mop. And that, that's that, that, that movement that you see in him. That's him trying to entice her to go in there and lay eggs. And these guys will, will lay eggs uh, all throughout the day. Uh, it's not uncommon for just this simple pair right here to sometimes lay 20, 30, 40 eggs a day. These guys are very, very proficient. Now one of the things you want to make sure that you do whenever you are uh, preparing for these guys to breed is you want to feed them a good, uh, a good healthy food. Um, they, they do really, really good on, on flake food, but it's a good idea to try to work in maybe some live baby brown shrimp or maybe some live daphnia. Uh, if you can't get a hold of that, maybe some of the uh, different type of frozen foods uh, that are out there. Um, that helps uh, uh, really get the, 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 the females nutritionally strong um, and the, uh, the healthier she is, the more eggs uh, that she's going to produce. So if you're looking to get you know a really big yield as much as you constantly can, uh, then you want to be able to feed these guys um, the best diet that, that you possibly can. Now the majority of time that I have with these guys, I'm pretty much only feeding them uh, uh, flake food. Occasionally I'll work in some, uh, some uh, uh, frozen food. 
But again, I, I pull eggs from these guys every single day. Um, so they do very, very, very well. And when it gets to the point, you pretty much, uh, depending on how many you're trying to get at a time, if you just got a single pair, uh, you can quickly be overrun with the amount of uh, eggs that you get. And if you have the ability to really hatch them, uh, you'll end up with a, a ton of these things. All right, so here we've got the uh, spawning mop pulled out. Um, again, this is late in the day, so there's not that many eggs. As you guys can see, there's a, a couple, there's one. Uh, one thing, let me tell you though, uh, whenever you're pulling your spawning mop out, um, I simply just pull it out and then I wring as much of the water as I can uh, back into the tank so that this thing isn't, you know, isn't soaking wet as we're working on it. Um, but let me warn you, because of what I've done before, is you want to make sure as you're pulling this mop out, you kind of want to knock it around on the top of the water to make sure that there's no fish in it. Rainbows very seldomly this happens to. Um, um, but I have, I've killed a, a female clown killie and I've killed a female uh, rice fish because they were in the mop and when I pulled it out, they stayed in it so that when I wrung it out, I literally wrung the fish to death by squishing it. So that's just a warning to you because of the bad mistake that I've made. You wanna talk about heartbreaking? I felt absolutely terrible, but you, please, please be careful whenever you are uh, doing that. So. Um, whenever you're looking at the mop, you want to be sure that you're under a good light uh, so that you can see them. If you're not under really that great a light, sometimes it's hard to pick them up. Um, as you'll see, like the ones that you can see right here, they basically just look like little crystal balls. And almost all the rainbow fish that are out there all look about that exact same way. So being under a really good, strong light, um, you can pick them up a lot faster and you won't spend so much time searching for them. And so, you again, you want to make sure your hands are clean. You don't want any oils or lotions or anything like that on them, but you can touch the eggs because they are, they're uh, really tough, uh, extremely durable, and so you can squeeze them. Now, obviously don't put a bunch of pressure in them because you can pop them, but it, it, you can just reach down and, and, and grab the egg and just kind of lightly pinch until it's in your fingers. And as you can see there, we've got one uh, that's in my finger there. And a lot of times it'll take a little bit of the uh, the yarn with it because uh, it, it it's got a sticky side to it that, that just locks itself onto that yarn. It's it's you can't just shake this thing and, and eggs will fall out. Um, you literally have to pull them out. All right, so now that we've got the egg pulled, let's go and talk about what the next thing that we want to do is. Okay, so if you look at here, the setup that I have here, uh, these are all of the different containers that I have uh, that have eggs on them. And so right now, um, we're working with the uh, Kamaka. So this is the uh, the Kamaka container. Yeah, I know that's a picture of a killifish on the side, but I just put the tape over the top of it because it became a pain constantly having to switch stickers out all the time because I was constantly changing them. And so these are just some small plastic containers that you can get from the store. Um, these work just fine. There's a lot of other different containers that you could use, but these I, I like the best. And so we just pop the top of it. And so uh, I just keep this thing filled up with uh, dechlorinated tap water. And then the other thing uh, that you wanna do is you want to uh, add some methylene blue to it. The methylene blue will help the eggs from uh, fungusing. Uh, that is a problem that you can have quite a bit of time uh, where they fungus and uh, nothing will ever be born once they fungus. And if one egg gets against another egg, that fungus will travel over to the next egg also and kill it. Um, so you want to be careful of that. So let me show you that. This is the brand that I use. It's the Cordon uh, Methylene Blue. This stuff goes a long way. This container will probably last you an eternity because in this little container right here, it only takes about two drops. Now, it's not an exact measurement. I like to get the water just uh, tinted uh, a little bit blue. Y you can get it tinted more blue than that if you want to. It's not actually gonna be really any kind of problem. So again, you don't necessarily have to worry about uh, measuring it out perfectly. So you can see here, we've got our little uh, plastic dripper here. And so we typically just do like one, two drops that are in there. And then we just wanna stir it up a little bit to get it all mixed up. 
And as you can see, as it finishes, um, it's just kind of it's just kind of tinted a light blue. You can still see into it, so it's not super super dark. But that's that's about as blue as you want it to be. All right, so you've got you've got your egg in your hand. You just simply put your hands in the water and make sure it comes off your fingers, and then that egg will sink to the bottom. And so you want to keep putting those eggs in there um, every single day. Just keep adding to them and keep adding to them. Uh, then after, I think it's about seven to 10 days uh, is when you'll start to see these eggs hatch. Um, you can watch them um, each day if you want to and you'll see them begin to form. Uh, when you look down the eggs, you, the first thing that you'll notice is you'll see two black eyes uh, appear on the eggs. So you know when those two black eyes have appeared that you're getting within just a few days of these guys actually hatching. And so once these guys hatch, um, basically what I do is since I'm putting eggs in this almost every single day. I'm also checking this for fry every single day. So I open it, first thing I do is check for fry. If there's any fry, I remove it and take it over to the grow out container. And then I go back to the mop, pull the eggs out and put them in there. And we do that on a daily basis. Okay, so the other way that you can do it, if you don't want to individually pull the eggs and you just want to pull the mop all by itself, you can take the mop and you can go put it in its own uh, a tank. Now again, you can put this in any size you want. You want to put this thing in a 150 gallon tank, you can do that, have fun finding the babies. Um, I like to use these smaller tanks like this. This is only like a three or four gallon tank. Um, I'll put the mop in here. And then what I'll do is if you look at the top of the mop, I've got a colored um, a zip tie on there. I've got four or five different colors of zip ties and that way I can take here on the outside of the tank and I can write the date that I put it in there like I can put you know today's date and then I'll put green and that way I know that mop got put in there in that day and then after about 15 days um, I know there's no chance of there being any more eggs in there they're gonna be that are fertilized so I can just remove that mop completely and then be able to put it back into the other tank and then I can just keep watching this tank to see when the uh, fryer hatching. You can do the methylene blue in here if you want to. It's not really as much necessary because the eggs are kept so separated in here, but you, you still can deal with fungusing issues. I feel like the success rate this way is much lower than taking them out individually. Um, but so when they start to hatch in here, if you want to take the time, you can remove the fry to someplace else so it's easier to feed them. Or if you want, you can sit there and just feed them in this container. Uh, the problem that you've got that you'll run into as the fry start to grow up, when you get fry that get to be so much bigger than the other fry, they'll start to eat their brothers and sisters. So you have to be really careful um, that you're constantly moving the fry and stuff around so that you never have ones that are too big that will be able to eat the other fry. Now the other thing that you can do, um, especially with kamakas, I struggled at first with kamakas getting them um, to live for the first two or three weeks and so sometimes instead of just using normal water like this I'll use an all green water tank I'll put I'll fill this thing up entirely with green water and that provides them with all the food they need for the first you know four or five months uh, of life now granted you've got to keep replenishing that green water or you've got to keep a light on it or you've got to keep some type of uh, um, some type of something that's actually feeding the green water uh, to keep it alive. If not, you're going to have to keep uh, replacing it. But that's a, a much easier way so that you don't have to mess with it uh, quite a bit. Uh, if you uh, don't know anything about green water, um, do a search for that. There's a lot of great videos out there showing you how you create your own green water. Green water is absolutely fantastic um, for keeping your, your fry in. All right, so let's get to the point now. We've got our fry and uh, let's talk about what we're going to do with those fry. Okay, so you will see here, this is my uh, grow out container. Um, if you guys have never seen this before, I'll link a video up above of how I made this thing. Uh, this thing has absolutely been a lifesaver. As you can see, I have, I have three of them now because they work so well. And so right here, you'll see the section that has uh, kamakas in it. If you guys can actually look in there, you can probably see there's a bunch of fry that are all uh, swimming around there uh, as it is right now. And so this makes it a lot easier to be able to feed them. Uh, now what I like to use, I like to use golden pearls. Uh, golden pearls, um, I'll show you a little bit about that. Uh, this is just a mixture of stuff. You can see all the different ingredients they put in it. But this stuff is specially made. Um, 
so that it's extremely, extremely small. So even the smallest of fish can actually uh, eat it. And also the way it's prepared is it's made so that this stuff uh, floats on the surface. And, and again, once you put it in there, it is so tiny, you can't see it. But you could, right as we, you put it in, it'll spread real quickly all over the surface and then you kind of can't even see it again. I, I'll link this above so you guys can find this. This stuff comes in all sorts of different sizes. Uh, like this one is five to 50 microns. That's, it's the smallest that there is. Uh, if you wanted to raise your fry up on this stuff, you could buy all the different sizes in between and just gradually move your fish up. Um, but I, I like to get mine on baby brine shrimp as fast as possible uh, because that yolk sac that's produced by the brine shrimp is just fantastic um, for baby fish and their health and their ability uh, to grow fast. And so let's go ahead and, and let's, let's feed them so you can see kind of how this stuff works. Okay, so what I like to do is I like to remove the golden pearls and put them in a different container that has a lid on it like this one. Uh, that way I can screw this on tightly because anytime I have powdered food that has a Ziploc top, I always forget to tighten it well enough and moisture gets in there and then it funguses and then I lose it all. So I, I take this and uh, I filled this up, you know, maybe halfway because this stuff will last forever. And then I take the bag and I seal it good and I put it in the refrigerator so that if I mess this up, I know I've still got some rest in there. Some of the Hikari first bites that you use, that happens to me all the time. And so what I like to do is, uh, this is what uh, one of my subscribers actually showed me, is just this fantastic way of feeding this stuff because it's so fine. What I've done is, you can see I actually had this Velcroed here so that I don't lose it. This is one of my wife's fancy makeup brushes. I think this is actually a Clinique brand. So this is probably like $5,000 or more. <laughs> so I like to use one of these because this is great for putting on makeup because it picks up really fine dust. So you can just take this and just lightly, lightly put it in here and then you can see how it just gets all over it. And then if you just tap it, it'll just rain that stuff down. And that way you can, you can control easier how much of this stuff you let off. Because if you try to dump this stuff in here into the water and any of those little hard pieces fall in there, they're just gonna sink to the bottom. You want this stuff to actually land on the water and float so that the fry uh, can see it. And this stuff will float for a, a long time. So we'll just dip, our, dip it in there, get a little bit on there like that, tap it off a little bit so we don't have too much. And then we just come over here to this. So we just come over to it like this, and then we just tap it lightly on the side, and we can see that it just kind of rains the stuff down. Or you can kind of take your finger in it like this and flick it a little bit, and you can, f you can just flick it onto the water like that. And again, once that stuff hits the water, it's like almost impossible to see because it's so, so fine. But this is really just a great way. Um, if you don't have one of the, these, you can get maybe just like a simple cheap paintbrush. You know, the little small kind, like the little kids paint by number. Uh, just something like that. That's a really easy, easy way uh, to distribute this stuff to the fish. Uh, the other thing, again, since I struggle with kamakas at first, what I also like to do is I like to feed this thing uh, green water, just like we talked about earlier. So sometimes I'll actually come in and I'll turn off the dripper and then I'll fill this thing with green water um, every other day or so. And uh, that way some of the babies that are uh, struggling to eat or just don't want to eat the golden pearls will have all of those uh, uh, living things that are in the green water to feed on. Um, instead. So uh, you don't want to forget, you want to be able to start another container um, to move these in when the, some of these fries start to get too big so they don't eat the other ones. So you may end up having four or five different ones of these containers to have the best success rate whatsoever. All right, I hope you guys have enjoyed this. I hope you learned a little bit uh, about breeding the Kamaka rainbows. Understand this is not just Kamakas. Almost any rainbow fish that you have pretty much breeds almost the exact same way. So you can use these same methods. You guys got any questions or comments, be sure to leave them down below. So thanks again, guys, and God bless.